Order and method. That is the way to solve the problem. I cannot see the logic in this. Perhaps... Is there something I am not... I must take a different approach if I am to un... I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction.
Detective Poro, what do you think you are doing in here? I have something I wish to discuss with you. Well, I hope it is important enough to justify barging into one's bedroom. I assure you it is. Good, because this has gone on far too long. We are snowed in this house while a murderer runs amok. I can understand your frustrations, but it is not as simple as... You were once an incompetent officer, and now it seems you are just as incompetent as a detective. If I was not being lied to and misled at every turn, perhaps the murderer would already be in custody. I hope you are not suggesting I had something to do with Felix's murder. I am suggesting that if I had the support that everyone claims they are offering, we would be in a very different situation. If you have something you want to ask, I suggest you ask me now. We met before Angeline was born, so he was often at the house when she was growing up. And where was it you two met? I was attending an event. Felix was also in attendance as a serving officer. A conversation was struck. So it was not through the Viscount that you two met? I did not require my husband to start conversations on my behalf. It was you that instigated it then? Oh, my, my, detective. That active imagination of yours has taken you on quite some journey. Edwin spent much of his time away on business before Angeline was born. Felix was a welcome distraction from the loneliness of the house. You were alone in the house? The staff continued their duties, of course, but trying to get any sort of sophisticated or cultured conversation from them was like drawing blood from a stone. And when Angeline was born? Edwin remained at home. It was his duty as a father. And the Major? He had his own business and life to tend to, but we remained in touch via letter. Around the time of Edwin's passing, Felix had relocated to the area. I'm sure he has hundreds of letters in there. Most of them could and should have been thrown away a long time ago. I refer to the letter addressed to you, the one of... Romantic nature. Oh, please, detective. Felix did not have a romantic bone in his body. He made his intentions quite clear in the letter. I must admit I myself was surprised. You really do have quite the active imagination, detective. If that is how you wish to interpret it, so be it. But I can assure you, the Major did not think of me that way, and certainly did not include it in a letter. I think that is all for now. Merci, madame. Get me in.
Come, my little grey sands. We must... I must act on thought and fact. Things are beginning to become clearer. Is this really necessary? have stayed in my home, but Felix was a grown man, detective. What he kept, hidden or otherwise, has nothing to do with me. But it does not surprise you that he had such a photograph? We have been friends, and he has been there for Angeline for many years, but you find it strange that he keeps a reminder of us? Perhaps that says more about you, detective. What I do find strange is that if he did hold a flame for you, why he would never express it? If he did, it was not reciprocated. I have not even considered another since my husband's passing. Not that it is any of your business. I think that is all for now. Detective Poirot, are you any closer to uncovering the truth of Felix's involvement with the letters? I am, mademoiselle. I can confirm that he was not the author of the blackmail letters. So the author is still out there? Oui, but it will not be long before they are apprehended, and the only letters they shall be penning will be from behind iron bars. Your confidence is rather assuring. Thank you, detective. I'm sorry, detective. I did not intend to leave your mind so full of thoughts. No apology is required. It actually made me question my whole chain of thinking. What if there had been a collusion between them, and the Major's murder was planned, organized and orchestrated to make the investigation seem almost impossible? Oh my, detective! That is... Every guest has a motive. You confirmed that with the mention of Mademoiselle Conrad and the Major's fight. Supplying one another with a rock-solid alibi would surely throw off any detective. But not you. Correct, Mademoiselle. It would take much more to stamp Detective Poirot. I haven't seen that book in so long. Yes, it was a gift for my 10th birthday. I have read it from cover to cover countless times. He left such a lovely inscription too. It sounds as though there is a side to the Major I did not get to see. Was it common for him to bring you gifts? Not common, but if he had been away for some time, he would bring me a small memento from his travels. He hasn't done that in some time, though. They were. I'm afraid they may have gathered some dust being in the storage room for so long. 
I kept them in hope of giving them to my child when the time comes. It sounds as though he had always cared about you. His presence at the house was comforting for us both after father died, even if sometimes he was a little too overprotective. That's right. Ever since I can remember, Felix has been around. It seems as though she has a number of support networks. The Major, her friendship with the Countess, not forgetting Monsieur Da Silva. Maman has many friends. I know how she may seem to Moss, but once you break the hard shell... There is a further shell waiting to be broken. Oh, <laughs> very good, detective. Forgive me, mademoiselle. I only jest. It's quite all right. You are not the only one that feels a razor tongue. She's grateful you are here, especially now, whether she shows it or not. They have often come to blows when it concerns Maman. They are both trying to protect her, but they themselves cannot seem to get along. She spoke of his desire to join the... Uh, how do you describe it? Social elite. Hmm. This isn't the first time she has vocalized that concern. She thinks the Major was just using our family name to make his way to the top. And you do not agree? I will not deny he has shown interest in Maman's social circles, but they have been friends since even before I was born. Surely all those years of friendship was not just to raise his social standing. How do you mean, detective? I imagine a house of this size is rather costly, keeping it in the immaculate condition it is in. Maman looks after the financial side of the house, but I think she has had to ask him more than once for a contribution of sorts. It is not for me to get involved. I shall not keep you any longer. Merci, mademoiselle. Order and method. That is the way to solve the problem. Something I am not. Come, my little grey cells. This will not get me any. Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. I must act on thought and fact, not on impulse. I must take a different approach if I am to uncover the truth. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction.
Is this really necessary? Who I allow in my house is none of your business. I do not have to explain anything to you. I did not think you were one for charity. I would not expect you to think much of anything. There is no need to talk on it any further, but I'm sure you will remember that, financially speaking, we have had our issues. Need I repeat myself, Detective? There is no need to talk any more on the subject. Men and women can remain friends without any romantic involvement. I'm sure your insistent questioning on such trivial matters are getting on my last nerve. Your continued probing into something that does not exist is becoming quite tiresome. There is nothing I can tell you that will magically present what you are looking for, Detective. I have grown weary of this conversation, Poirot. There is nothing more to say. Madame, you continue to withhold the truth. And you continue to get on my last nerve. I am not obliged to tell you every detail of my private life. But when it impedes my investigation? Believe what you wish. You clearly have no idea what you're talking about. My personal life has nothing to do with your investigation. I... Who I allow in my house is none of your business. I do not have to explain anything to you. I did not think you were one for charity. I would not expect you to think much of anything. There is no need to talk on it any further, but I'm sure you will remember that, financially speaking... He was a man that required no protection, detective. Especially from me. That is the impression I had of him, which is why your defensive stance warrants questioning. Your insistent questioning on such trivial matters are getting on my last nerve. Then... Your continued probing into something that does not exist is becoming quite tiresome. There is nothing I can tell you that will magically present what you are looking for, Detective. I have grown weary of this conversation, Poirot. There is nothing more to say. I have explained this to you already. You really are trying my patience. Madame, you continue to withhold the truth. And you continue to get on my last nerve. I am not obliged to tell you every detail of my private life. But when it impedes my investigation... Believe what you wish. You clearly have no idea what you're talking about. My personal life has nothing to do with your investigation. Who I allow in my house is none of your business. I do not have to explain anything to you. I did not think you were one for charity. I would not expect you to think much of anything. There is no need to talk on it any further, but I'm sure you will remember that, financially speaking, we... He was a man that required no protection, Detective. 
especially from me. That is the impression I had of him, which is why your defensive stance warrants questioning. Your insistent questioning on such trivial matters are getting on my last nerve. How many times do I have to tell you? There was no romantic feelings between us. I have grown weary of this conversation, Poirot. There is nothing more to say. Madame, you continue to withhold the truth. And you continue to get on my last nerve. I am not obliged to tell you every detail of my private life. But when it impedes my inve- If only you were this focused on finding the blackmailer and- Madame. Very well. I did not lie about how we met. I was attending an event, raising money for- Oh, I cannot recall now. It had been some time since I had returned home and was rather missing English soil. I was aware of Felix's invitation, or at least that, that there was to be several British officers attending the party, and that is where our friendship began. He was a warm reminder of home, and I enjoyed conversing with him. We shared walks in the park and read together. As I said, he was a welcome distraction from the days spent alone. I shall go no further with the details, but I will say, I had no intention on being unfaithful to my husband. It was never our plan to go that far. Once I found out I was pregnant, I knew it had to stop. The Viscount never questioned Mademoiselle's birth? In his mind, he had no reason to, and he shouldn't have had to. It was my mistake to bear. If he knew the truth, our lives would have been ruined. I told Felix that he was to stay away, but he had no intention to. He became an uncle figure to Angeline, and they grew closer after Edwin's death. I could not tell her the truth. Too much time had passed. The secret remained only between him and I. And what were the Major's thoughts on revealing the truth? He wanted to tell her everything. He wanted her to know exactly who he was. But I told him no. It would not have been the poignant reconciliation that he expected. She would not understand. It must be. But I have told no one. And the Major? Felix promised me he wouldn't tell a soul. And I believed him. Well, even if he wanted to. You did not think anyone knew, and that is why you disregarded the letter. If you bow to these criminals, they will only try to claw more from you. I tried to retrieve them from the safe after everyone had retired last night. But when I opened the safe, they were nowhere to be found. I assumed he must have hidden them somewhere else. When I entered the study this morning, they were as visible as a red notice on a police station wall. I would appreciate if you did not compare them to the face of a wanted felon. Pardon, madame. But that does mean someone else in the house has seen them. I, I don't understand. Why would... A mystery that is still yet to be solved. I think that is all for now. Merci, madame. Mm. 